It took NASA two decades to start hiring women, hiring people of color as astronauts. How did the class of new guys come about? Well, it was it was 1978, and prior to that, as you said, um, astronauts were white. Uh, male military pilots, and um, the uh, 1978 brought this brand new class, largely because NASA was under a great deal of scrutiny after the Civil Rights Act passed to try to integrate. And finally, in 78, they did, and they opened the class to a lot of different kinds of people. Um, and in particular, uh, NASA was also uh, pursuing the shuttle as its newest vehicle, and the shuttle, of course, was larger than any vehicle um, before it and could take up not just pilots, but could take up civilian scientists. And so in this class of 1978, you got the first six women, uh, first six women astronauts for the United States, and you got four men of color. And it was really a historic class and a big change for NASA. Dr. Sullivan, as I understand it, NASA was your first full-time job out of school. I imagine that just working at NASA for pretty much anyone is already an exhilar exhilarating, also a terrifying thing. But to enter the workforce at a time where there weren't a lot of other people like you in those roles, I have to imagine that magnified all of those feelings. Well, being the only woman in the game was a common thing for me already by that point. Uh, as I grew up and went through college and grad school doing field geology and oceanography, uh, I was very often either the only one or maybe one of two women in field camp or aboard a research ship. So uh, that wasn't strange to me at all, being outnumbered uh, by the men around me. And in all those cases, uh, and also with our class at NASA, uh, you know, they were confident that the six of us had been selected on the same criteria that they had. Uh, and it was, you know, now you show your stuff. So they were actually very supportive. You, you tell a, a great story in the book. You, of course, trained and flew with Sally Ride, the first American woman in space. And according right. to the book, you and Sally once switched name tags at a press event, discovered <laughs> no one could tell you apart, which is incredible. Chef's kiss. I mean, you weren't just dealing with it <laughs> internally. You were dealing with it externally in the media with people who were trying to make sense of what it meant to send women to space. Right. We, we had realized just walking around the Johnson Space Center that uh, it, the six of us apparently looked enough alike uh, that we'd often get called by the other person's name. <laughs> and someone would launch right into a technical conversation that you'd be bewildered why they're talking to you about it. And then you'd realize, ah, you want Anna. I'll tell her to call you. That happened over and over. So that's where that game came from. I love it. Meredith, you, you write that some space shuttles were held together with spit and Scotch guard spray, terrifying. I mean, why were these kinds of safety issues ignored before the Challenger explosion? I think um, what people don't understand about the shuttle is I think most of us think it was a very safe and uh, almost like riding an airplane. And it was really a test vehicle. It was the most complex thing at the time humans have ever created. And with that complexity came a great deal of risk. And these astronauts, especially Kathy's class, were bootstrapping the program into existence and bootstrap bootstrapping that vehicle into existence. And so they were making it work often on budgets that were not big enough, um, quite honestly, from the Congress. I, I'm just, my hands are sweating thinking about going into space <laughs> with something that has been bootstrapped. I mean, Dr. Sullivan, to that point, you lost three of your NASA classmates in the Challenger disaster. Did that create trepidation about flying again? I mean, what gave you the courage to fly again? Yeah, we lost four of our class, actually, in Challenger. It was a, a really devastating event. Um, you know, I grew up in an aerospace family, so I think I was maybe a little more familiar with the scale of risk involved in you know, launching test airplanes or rockets. And as Meredith said, shuttle was both. It would have been better to keep it as a, an X-plane, as NASA calls thing, and learn lessons before you built a full one. Uh, but, you know, part of what drove me to be sure we got back to flying was I really believed, and I still believe, there's a a big purpose to humans going into space, for knowledge, for humanity, for our country. Uh, and if we called it all off because we had one tragic flight and, you know, a horrifying moment on television, uh, I would have been really disappointed. And I would have felt like, in that case, that my crewmates had died in vain.